Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today we're going to talk about my experience with using Windows 11 for the two months or so that I have been using it. Now, I knew prior to upgrading that there were some issues between using Windows 11 and recent AMD processors, and as you may know, I'm currently running a Ryzen 5700X on my main gaming rig, which of course leaves me smack dab in the middle of that mess, and is why I originally put off the upgrade for a few weeks or so. But I'm still a tinkerer at heart that loves to play with all of the new and shiny things, so I figured why not just take the plunge and see what happens along the way. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Just a quick forewarning, if you're looking for benchmarks and exact performance comparisons of Windows 11 versus 10 or Linux or whatever, you're in the wrong video. We'll be focusing on my personal experiences, as I personally don't think it's that important when debating OS choices to compare performance numbers unless it's like a major problem or bug, which I will talk about later since I did run into that bug with AMD processors, but in my opinion it's more important to focus on things like the stability of the platform, what are the major changes from the previous version, if there are any, and if your apps will still run. Also, to be clear, I didn't run any performance benchmarks for my games, so that really wouldn't be my personal experience if I went and did that for the video. Anyways, why don't we start with what I've liked so far about the upgrade. First, I really do appreciate that, for the most part, the experience has not changed much. This really cannot be taken for granted, as I remember when Windows Vista and Windows 8 dropped, both introduced big changes like the more restrictive user access controls or the start screen that caused a lot of uproar among the user base. With Windows 11, you still have your start menu that lets you navigate the system easily. You still have your uh, pinned and open applications and a taskbar at the bottom of the screen with a system tray that has a clock and qu quick access to some more stuff. You've also got your window controls at the top right. You still have control panel or at least the updated control panel. But in other words, it's still Windows. And on a similar note, there haven't been many major changes when it comes to app compatibility. You don't have to worry about not being able to use your favorite web browser or play your games or use your video editing software or whatever. For the most part, it should all just still work. Though I will note here that I did run into some issues with VirtualBox, and that's due to, to some changes with the underlying Hyper-B virtualization software, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I just really appreciate that everything just works, nothing crashed or anything weird like that, and I could just go about my business and play games. Next up, there are also some noticeable, if minor, changes to the desktop, one of which are the rounder corners and more depth to the UI of components compared to the previous flat-only design guidelines that got incredibly boxy and boring. I did appreciate it at the time about 10 years ago since the flat styles made it a lot easier for lower spec computers to handle the UI, but it's definitely a bit dated now and again, a bit boring, and your average computer's graphical horsepower has increased quite a bit since then, so it's nice to see a little bit more eye candy, if you will. On a more controversial note, while I don't entirely agree with it, on one hand, I do appreciate that Microsoft are trying to do a better job to secure their platform by requiring the usage of Trusted Platform Module, or TPM 2.0, to upgrade to Windows 11. Microsoft really has to do something to tackle the Windows is less secure stigma that has plagued them for ages, and while it does exclude using hardware from older platforms that really aren't that old, sometimes you just have to have a cutoff point for the old stuff that you do support so you can cut out all the old cruft and stuff that has been sitting in there for ages. It really does simplify testing and uh, making maintenance a lot easier, and again, while I don't entirely agree with it and it's a bit annoying, I do commend them for at least trying something. And for one last small thing that I appreciate, the, the startup and shutdown times for Windows 11 do seem a bit faster. Again, I don't have any exact measurements for this, so you'll have to take my word for it. And it's not like we're talking about several minutes versus seconds, where it's like pretty much life-changing. But I do remember Windows 10 on my computers always seeming to take forever to shut off for whatever reason. And now I can just reboot and I'm back up and going in seemingly no time. <sighs> So that's where my list of things I like about Windows 11 ends, and let's move on to what you're probably here for. What I don't like about Windows 11, and spoiler alert, there's quite a bit, some of which I'm actually kind of angry about. Starting with your first experience installing it. Why do you need a Microsoft account to sign in? I absolutely hate this trend in software where you're required to have an online account just to sign in to access software that would function perfectly fine on its own without needing an internet connection whatsoever. 
forget about privacy concerns, which is a long story to talk about, you know, another time. But what if I'm trying to install Windows 11 on a PC in like a lab for work that doesn't have network access yet? Or while I'm on the road trying to get a laptop ready for myself or someone else before having a connection? Or even setting up a system with a shared account that doesn't make sense to share your Microsoft account sign-ins? It may not be that common, but situations do arise where it just doesn't make sense to have only Microsoft account sign-ins. And I know you can get around this uh, f finagling your way with the pro or enterprise licenses, but how does it make sense that uh, home license users don't have access to local accounts? And to be clear, I'm okay with recommending you use an online account to sync user preferences, software licenses, or whatever provides a smoother experience, but it should not be required. That is unacceptable in my book. And on a similar note, if you haven't heard yet, Microsoft have been pushing really hard for you to use Microsoft Edge instead of Chrome or Firefox or whatever you prefer to use. Their tactics include making it really tedious to switch defaults for your browser by not exposing a default browser option, but instead making you switch all file and link types that open in which application. And they also nag you a lot to switch to Edge for whatever benefits they may claim, you know, whether it's in the start menu, when you use a browser, pretty much wherever you put your eyeballs, they're gonna nag you. I've personally even had my defaults magically switch back to Edge after a Windows update, which to me is also not okay. Like, why? why? <laughs> this smells to me of the tactics that got the old Microsoft hit with an antitrust lawsuit two decades ago. So let's hope they get another at some point for this. Now, moving on, because I can rant about that stuff all day. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the center start menu and uh, application icons. It does look nicer in my opinion. The symmetry really does look good to me. Um, and when I'm on Linux, I even do generally prefer to use the GNOME desktop environment with a dock enabled that has centered icons. But it just feels weird when I'm in my Windowsy mindset, though that's probably just because I'm not quite used to it yet. But it is kind of annoying to me when you open up uh, or close an app that isn't pinned and all the icons slide to the left or right to recenter. I'm a creature of habit, and even that little bit of sliding can mess up where I'm aiming my mouse when I'm trying to switch apps. And speaking of minor-ish annoyances, why is the rename option behind another menu when you right-click a file or folder? Like, I get it. You want to clean up and simplify that context menu so it's less mentally taxing or daunting to the average user. But isn't the point of the context menu to provide quick access to frequently used options? One doesn't simply run around renaming files for fun or whatever, but it does seem like something that's worth keeping within arm's reach and not behind another layer to sift through. Now let's get back to the app compatibility stuff I mentioned earlier. Um, like I said, I wasn't able to use VirtualBox when I first upgraded due to some changes with Hyper-V. I actually had to uninstall it when I was in Windows 10 before I could do the upgrade. This really wasn't that big of an issue for me, and I would imagine most people doing serious work with virtual machines in Windows are using Hyper-V directly, so I was able to just uninstall it and continue with my upgrade as expected. It was just kind of annoying trying to figure out that thing at first, and if I really needed VirtualBox, then that would kind of be a showstopper. And there's possibly some other software that had some initial compatibility growing pans. Now, to be fair, I do believe Oracle released a fix for this later in October. I just haven't really needed it, so I didn't install it. It was just kind of annoying again when I first was trying to upgrade and that app was just ca causing issues with the upgrade. And of course, my gripes are not purely in regards to the software. And while it is slowly getting better, I'm still having somewhat reduced performance in CPU intensive tasks, like video rendering in particular. Rendering my average 8 to 12 minute video at 1080p with the H.264 codec on my 5700X used to take me somewhere from 7 to 10 minutes or in that range to complete when I was on Windows 10. And since going to Windows 11, rendering the same or similar videos has taken considerably longer, frequently taking around 2 to 3 times as long. Again, this has gotten better over time, since initially the first video I rendered on Windows 11 took uh, well over 30 minutes to, to render before an update partially fixed the issue, but again, it's still kind of annoying even if it is getting better. And also, for the record, I haven't noticed any major performance issues while gaming, but the games I usually play really aren't demanding on the CPU, so your mileage may vary for that one. And I will also mention here that it wasn't bad enough for me to want to go back to Windows 10. It was annoying to deal with at first, but it just wasn't worth the effort to downgrade and then worry about upgrading later down the road. And finally, getting back to the TPM 2.0 point from earlier, regardless of the reasoning behind it, it still doesn't sit right with me to not be supporting hardware that isn't even that old. Ryzen 1000 series and Intel 7th gen are only about four to five years old, 
And yes, you could get some decent performance uplifts by upgrading to newer hardware, but not everyone cares about that nor wants to spend money to replace their PC when it's currently working. Much like the Microsoft account sign-in stuff, I'm okay if you just strongly suggest using a newer platform with the TPM 2.0 modules to be more secure or whatever, but still allow you to roll with older hardware if it just doesn't quite make sense yet to upgrade, especially since a lot of hardware is either overpriced or hard to find right now. So there you have my thoughts on my experience so far with Windows 11, and hopefully you were able to get something out of it. I certainly have several big gripes against Windows 11, but like I said earlier, or maybe I didn't, but anyway, I wasn't really considering going back to Windows 10 unless there were some like major issues, like my hardware straight up wouldn't work on Windows 11 or was just super buggy and crashed all the time, or I just couldn't play my games. So I'm sticking with it on my desktop since it can do everything I need it to, and it still does it very well. I'm still considering running Linux on my desktop alongside it. It's just kind of annoying that there's always something that doesn't work right, no matter what distro I use. Either like games don't run or work well on them, or I can't get DaVinci Resolve to work well. It's just, it, it's always something. Like in Fedora, for instance, this is this is another side rant. Um, like in Fedora, like under the Cinnamon and Mate desktops, the the desktop just kind of crashes and the, and the theme resets. I don't know what that's about. I don't notice that on any other distro. Anyways, uh, uh, that's a weird thing. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but now I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on Windows 11. If you like it, you hate it, something in between, whatever it is, let me know in the comment section below. I am really curious to know what your thoughts are on it. If you disliked the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button and also get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you can keep up with my latest videos and show your support. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us. Or if you need it, there are several channels to get some help. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.